Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Marco. Tonight I wanted to show you my homemade 747-400 cockpit. So I'm going to try in this 15-minute video or so to answer as many questions as possible. However, we have a website. I made a website called www.boeing747sim.com Visit it because there you will find a wealth of information including step-by-step -step construction. So I'm just going to give you a quick review of the cockpit itself. So full size 747 400 100% scale. Most most dimensions taken from actual drawings, which you will find on my website. Starting from the cockpit itself, it includes a lot of real components, but some from friends and some from airplane recyclers. Now the noise you hear right now, of course, is the APU, a silly power unit. And the ATC here in the background, there's real live ATC going on right now in Shannon. As far as real parts or components is concerned, we we'll start with the landing gear assembly. Let me turn the light on. That is actually from a 767, but it's exactly the same. Let's start from the most important piece of all. This is a, a CP flight MCP, mode control panel. This is basically the brain of the simulator. You really couldn't fly much without an Italian company called CP Flight. This unit for three years now, so cost was around eight hundred dollars US to ship to the shipping. If it's our dummies, don't do a thing right now. Down here we have going down to it the MIP, my instrument panel. PFD, of course, is the primary flat display, and it's the most important display of, of in our cockpit. This is without a, a doubt the most important display in all of the cockpit. Immediately to his right is the ND navigation display. The immediately to his right we have a smaller artificial horizon, a backup artificial horizon. And in the center of the cockpit, at the center of the MIP we have our upper ACAS. This is basically where you monitor all your engine functions and other functions. On the right side First off, surf side, we have a duplicate of the left side. I could have very easily connected uh, the right side to a different output on the video card. This meant, however, if I did that, I will have to rob some of the power from the external view. So, my computer has two very powerful video cards, matched exactly. In order to free up as much power and resources for the outside view, what I did was I dedicated one video card exclusively to the outside view, that's the primary video card, and the second uh, video card to the instrumentation. Because I have four monitors on the second video card, and that's as many as it would allow, if I wanted a, a separate display over there, meaning reverse to the main one, I would have used one of the outputs on the primary video card. I didn't want to do that because I wanted as much power as possible going to the outside view so that I don't have to worry about lowering my details, lowering my traffic. Hence my, my sliders on, the, on, the, on both video cards actually, but especially on the main one, are tuned to the max, no limitations. If I leave my frame rates unlimited, I get spikes of up to 200 frame rates, so that's as much power this computer has. However, what most people don't realize is that the human eye can only discern a difference or a flickering, I should say, up to about 25, 27 frames per second. Therefore, anything above that, anything over that, it's really a waste of resources. So it is a very good idea to, if you have a mid-range to lower range computer, lock it to about 25. If you have a powerful computer, lock it to about 25 to 37, which is already 10 above your limit anyways. Doing this, I'm basically running unlimited sliders, full detail, full everything, tri-linear buffering, you name it, full lighting, with smooth as well performance, no problem whatsoever. Going back to our cockpit here, the latest addition to the cockpit virtually last week, and by the way, today is uh, September 27th, 2016. Uh, the latest addition to my cockpit was the uh, linked yokes and as you can see they are linked 
fully linked and working just wonderfully. I wish spring loaded uh, columns feel just perfect, self centering, of course, as you can see. There you go. And I just love them. As you can see on the screen here, a software based FMC which does the exact same thing. It's one to the right is a TCAS. Now, the uh, throttle, which I love, uh, the fuse reach panel and the trimmers are, is, this is actually a, a real panel from an Atro 747 and it's all fully wired and working. The throttle itself is not real, but it was modeled, molded, and it's a perfect duplicate of a real 747. Um, throttle, everything works. Uh, Togas reaches. Um, you can reprogram everything the way you like. A, a speed brake, flaps of course, everything works. Center pedestal, it's all dummy. Uh, nothing works in it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna wire any of the switches. I really never use them. They're mainly for looks, but it looks very pretty indeed. Basically all I did was place a $10 neon bulb, uh, four footer or actually three footer on the floor facing upwards. And there you have an illuminated center pedestal. The illuminated panels on the MIP was achieved for under $20. Basically what you do, you go to Home Depot or Rona and you buy yourself a white Christmas cord light, which I believe they're about 12 feet, 10, 12 feet or so. And what you do, you run them, you start from one end, behind of course, and you run them all the way, hot gluing it as you go, with hot glue, you run them all the way around where it needs to go, and you end to the other side, and you power it. And of course, as you can see, it runs also down here. There you go, it shines down. And by the way, mine actually changes color. And again, because it is a Christmas light, as you can see, it changes color, makes it nice and pretty. But total cost $20, and it does the job very well. On my left here, we have a electronic flight bag, EFB, extremely useful. I got so used to this thing that I really don't fly anymore without it. All the way from planning your fuel, how much fuel you need for each trip, airport charts, your routes, your weather, all live, all real, uh, and it's an XD. The side panels, they're modeled mostly after the uh, Dash 8 series, the leg room on the side here. So I opted for a simpler, more streamlined 800 series, works fine. I'm happy with it. The upper panel, the overhead panel was very difficult to make. It took me about two nights to make this panel because of the bending and because of all the sides. However, once you make the first one, the second one, you can make it half of the time. The overhead panel, if you look at the other side of it, it has over 500 wires attached to it. However, you really don't need more than 50 or 60 of them wired anyways. Uh, basically what you uh, need is your engine starters, your lights, your logo lights, your outside, your flashers um, and other minor optional uh, light switches. Connect more things, make it better, change it and it just evolves and it becomes more and more beautiful as you go. For example, a couple of Sundays ago I got the urge of making myself the aft overhead panel. So I made the drawings, I repaired the wood and Basically, it took me all Sunday, but at, by the end of the day, I had a beautiful looking aft overhead panel, and it really complements the forward overhead panel, and it completes it, and it makes makes it look much more realistic. We have uh, emergency lights. Of course, I have uh, two of them, one on either side, and also real from the 747 20 series, actually, I believe, at the windows posts. Of course, the right and left side, but last but not least which is the most important part of all, is the real uh, seats on both sides, including J rails, as you can see down there. So there you go, so this is the cockpit from outside. It looks pretty good, I would think. So there you go, these are the seats, the lights, overheads, overhead panel. And let's zoom in a little bit. It looks pretty decent. Now, the shell itself was all constructed by wood, of course. 
it's covered with uh, plastic, styroplastic is called. Now these are of course plexiglass panels, very nice to work with. You can cut them with scissors and they will not break. Um, over there you see a 1080 projector, I will eventually have two, perhaps three. The 180 degrees curved screen is already built, as you can see, already in place. So, but as you can see yourself, just one projector, I get a 10 or 11 foot wide front view. Now, we're going to start the engines and we're approaching the, 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 the end of the video here. I don't want to keep you for too long. I hope I've answered uh, as many questions as possible. And so we are now going to start the engines. Now, your switches, of course, down here are off. What you want to do is you pull the uh, engine start switches down. The, the, the sequence I like to use is uh, four, three, one, two. So you pull the switch until the valve opens usually happens about at uh, 1.0 on the N1s. Once the valve opens, you release the switch, then you place your hand on the, on the fuel switches here, and once your N1s reach about 2.6, you turn them on, and that starts the engine. Uh, and you do that in sequence. Okay, so we have uh, engine number four first. There you go, rotating, starts rotating the valve and 2.6 you turn the fuel switch on next engine number three go down as soon as you reach one you let go and as soon as you reach 2.6 you turn the switch on and there you go engine number Three is on. Now we are going to start engine number one. Uh, okay, so engine number one and rotating, as you can see. And we wait until the end ones show 2.6 or so. 2.5, 2.6, and there it goes. Last but not least, engine number two and rotating. And again, we're waiting for 2.6 or so. And that's when we turn the switch on. And now we have all four engine running. We wait until they stabilize. Of course, we have parking brakes on right now, so we ain't going anywhere. But I'm gonna show you throttles. There you go. You're gonna hear the engine revving up. There you go. Once again, throttles. Hope that answers all your questions. If you have any more questions, do not hesitate to visit my site. I will give you the address one last time. It is www.boeing747sim.com. Visit our website. There is a, a, a sea of information there, step by step construction pictures all the way from the platform to the finished product. There is schematics, there is uh, dimensions, there is uh, how I built my yokes, and, uh, and there is a forum where we can ask any questions. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Mark, and happy flying from Canada.